TA uh, Board of Directors meeting. Agenda item one, the Pledge of Allegiance. We have with us today Mr. Roberto Jimenez, a CCRTA bus operator trainee. Mr. Jimenez served in the United States Marine Corps from 1983 to 1987. He was discharged with the rank of Lance Corps. Uh, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Thank you for your service to our country. We appreciate that very much. Thank you for being with us this morning. Okay, Ms. Marisa, would you please call the roll? Dan Weyendecker. Here. Ana Jimenez. Here. Lynn Allison. Here. Gabby Canales. Beatrice Chato. Here. Jeremy Coleman. Armando Gonzalez. Arthur Granado. Present. Erica Mamie. Present. Aaron Munoz. Here. Eloy Salazar. Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. All right, agenda item three, the safety briefing. We've got a special guest today uh, for a safety briefing we, uh, who is visiting us all the way down here from the North Pole. Mr. Claus, where are you at, sir? There he is. All right. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Chris Kringle. Thank you for joining us. You're going to have to deal with this guy right here. Yeah. Uh, it's Santa Claus. I want that Grinch costume. Uh -huh. There we go. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Everyone, my name is... Santa Nicolas, <laughs> and I am the Global Director of Christmas Operations, Toy Distributions, and Safety. Today, I'm filling in for my fellow Texas Longhorn number one fan, Mike, <laughs> Mike Rendon. He couldn't make it. To provide some sparkling safety tidings. In the event of an emergency, a Code Rudolph will sound promptly us to exit the border room to my right, your left. We will jingle all the way towards the west stairwell and deck the halls to the first floor. We will then be dashing through the west side doors. Once we are holly and jolly outside, we will ba -rum -pa -bum -bum <laughs> towards the clock tower, which is adjacent to the bus and reindeer transfer station. Marisa will merrily account for all board members, and I will be the last one out to ensure that all the good boys and girls are out safely. <laughs> Mike wanted me to remind you of a few things to remember. Don't get wrapped up in danger. Please avoid the elevator during an emergency. Do not return if it's still silent night. Wait until all clear has been given. If we need to shelter in place, we will shelter so at my satellite elf workshop, the west side stairwell. And finally, Christmas isn't for a few more weeks, so some of you, and you know who, still have time to get off my naughty list, so let's be good for safety's sake. I'll make sure to talk to Mike before I check my list twice to see who was naughty or nice and from all RTA safety security director marketing finance procurement everybody in this organization we want to say Merry Christmas board of directors from the bottom of our hearts and have a safe holidays Merry Christmas. Now, I gotta go because I got a lot of places to go but I left a little tiny token of appreciation for all your hard work, for your service to this community. I know it takes a lot. I understand, I know what it takes. I once sat in your seat. So keep it nice, do, do not misbehave because I'll take that gift back. So in your break, go back there and then you'll enjoy it. Merry Christmas all. Thank you, Mr. Claus. Let's go. <laughs> 
Hey, uh, <coughs> Councillor, could we do an investigation on who appointed Mr. Claus to the Board of Directors? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to see a demonstration of the param param pum. <laughs> Very good. All right. That's agenda item three. Re agenda item four, receipt of the conflict of in interest affidavits. There were none received. Thank you, ma'am. We're on agenda item five, the opportunity for public comment. We have a three-minute limit. The board cannot address any uh, discussion uh, on the public comment, and uh, nobody can give their three-minute limit to another person. I didn't say any public comment. There were none received online. Um, there's one signed up, uh, Sugar Rodriguez. OK. Ms. Rodriguez, welcome this morning. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Took me about three minutes to get here, but no I'm here. <laughs> OK, uh, to make it brief, these are just observations I have made over the past three or four months in regard to the buses, the drivers, the passengers. Uh, so I'll try to run through it real quick, and then I'll leave the list for you all to review. Um, the first item is that um, and these are not uh, not observe in, in regards to like there's a lot of traffic and or other issues that have been delaying buses. These are things that are just happening, you know, without those uh, other things going on. Uh, buses may arrive 10 or 15 minutes early and do not leave until three to five minutes longer a, uh, after their departure time. At Southside Station, sometimes the bus may leave early, maybe two or three minutes before they depart time. Sometimes this looks like uh, when they get to the timing point, they're there extra time and they got time to get off the bus to use their phone. Uh, and that's what I speculate that's going on. This doesn't happen very frequently, but the times that I've been on the bus, uh, on some of these buses, it happens. Uh, this means that some of these buses are may, might be running a little faster than they should. On uh, Port Air stations, and I try not to go over there, <laughs> the buses can arrive um, and they will stay in the spot where they're at, they unload, they'll still stay in their spot, and then they move over to load passengers, but if they don't see anybody there, they take off. Well, the reason they don't see anybody there because everybody's back wondering where they're gonna stop, and by the time they get over there, uh, the bus takes off. This has happened to me, and I had to wait about 45 minutes. Um, the bus, uh, the passenger who's trying to get, there's another issue, when passengers are trying to get on the bus, uh, they don't wait for those to get off. This causes a lot of friction, people rubbing against each other. That's time consuming, and that affects the driver staying on time. Uh, buses don't always have their destination sign up. Uh, this is mainly at Port Air, so people can know what bus is going where. Um, some, some of them do, they have them up, and I don't know if there's uh, some type of rule about when they should have them up. But that kind of causes a lot of confusion with some of the passengers. I feel that if the bus was just stop, <laughs> all just stop, unload, and load where they're at, that might speed things along. Because by experience, on a daily basis, 23 is late a lot coming down Morgan. And I sometimes have to catch that because I have to catch 29 to get over to my office over on Corona. Uh, so I got a distance to go. So timing is real important to me. Uh, some of the drivers uh, do not signal, well, do not signal to the passengers to wait. They could so that other passengers get off. Some of them are good and they'll go like this and those people will wait. But others, they're, I don't know what they're doing, but they're not <laughs> watching who's trying to get off or trying to get on. There are uh, many passengers who do not have any their money or ticket ready to board. This causes a lot of delay, or they'll get up on the bus, go sit down, put their stuff down, come back, and then pay. That's, I'm sure, frustrating to the driver. On a pretty packed bus, some buses allow people to stand up front and close to the driver. This blocks the aisle for anyone trying to, to board or get, uh, get off. It also causes, uh, it blocks the view for passengers who need to get off and may miss their stop because of that. And, a lot of them sometimes are allowed to uh, be across that yellow line, which I know is a violation. 
but it happens. Even sometimes I say, oh, well, I'm only going to stand here a minute. Well, a minute turns into 10 to 15 before they get off. Uh, then, let's see, some passengers obviously are intoxicated, stumbling, uh, incoherent, um, but they're still allowed to board. This causes disruption. Uh, sometimes they're even threatening to other passengers. I don't know what the ruling is about that for these individuals to be on okay on the bus because I've seen a lot of times that they get in conflicts with other passengers. This creates and escalates and it's, it's timely also and it's threatening to other passengers. Some passengers are just not comfortable, especially your elderly passengers. They, you know, uh, they sense fear, you know, uh, when this is going on. Uh, some drivers are not observant to what's going on in the buses or any passengers that are walking around. Um, uh, one guy came on the bus with an open can of beer and just walked in, sat down. Uh, after he sat down, then the driver told him, oh, you need to exit, uh, you need to throw away your can. Oh, it's Sprite. Uh, he says, no, it's not. So the guy stood up, finished drinking the beer, and then threw it out. At that point, it's obvious this person doesn't care. He should have been exited off the bus. Uh, there's been other more violent interactions on the bus where uh, the driver is just... And the time uh, limit's been reached, so... Okay. I will leave this for y'all. Uh, I was about to the end, and the only thing I said, we need buses running longer because the clients I have don't have enough time to get home because the bus is in too late. Great. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Rodriguez. Okay. Pass it down, Art, and we'll get it to Marisa to make a copy for us. Thank you very much. All right, uh, any other public comment? Here or none, I'll close agenda item five. Uh, I have a comment, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, not directed at the speaker, but I do appreciate the feedback from the ridership and the community and the decorum of how the activities are performed on the bus. I ask that Derek will just look into this and follow up. So I do appreciate the constructive feedback. Thank you, mm -hmm. Madam Secretary. Any other comments? Okay. Here are none. Uh, agenda item six, awards and recognition. Uh, the Corpus Christi RTA new hires. Uh, Derek, you have the floor. All right. Everyone. We have seven new hires that I would like to, to recognize. And that, so if you would, please stand up when I call your name. We have, for our transportation department, we have Danny Hill and Jonathan Carpentier. They're both bus operator trainees. And please come up front. For facilities ma maintenance, we have David Rodriguez, our facilities maintenance technician two supervisor, and Joel Mendez, our, our custodial supervisor, which is an internal promotion. Excellent. And for vehicle maintenance, we have Alan Vigil, who is a vehicle maintenance technician, and Christian Bustamante, which is a garage service technician, which works in the evenings helping to clean and fuel our buses. Great. And then we have our new director of planning, Leon Alfaro, right over here. So please, I'd like to give him a round of applause for starting their career here at RTA. <laughs> and if you could come up over here. I'm going to take pictures, guys. Come yes. on up. Welcome aboard, everybody. Should we stand beside, behind them? You want to start? Or do you want or, us how do you stand? want us, Rita? If you guys want to crunch up behind them, okay. and we will take <laughs> <laughs> them. <laughs> Some people didn't want to walk. <laughs> so, so Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Again, welcome aboard, everybody. We look forward to working with you. All right, uh, agenda item seven. Meeting minutes, discussion and possible action to approve the board minutes of the Board of Directors meeting on November 1st, 2023. You've had this in your packets, the ones that had your iPads. Uh, so I would uh, entertain any additions, corrections, deletions, if, and if none, I motion. So I did, oh, uh, hold on just a second. I did, um, 
On the guest in the audience, do we have to list everybody that was here? Because I did see a lot of names missing from the minutes. As in speakers? No, as in guests, because the minutes did specify um, guests in the audience. Do Marisa, we? Uh, will you add the app, make sure we update the guest list for the November I, 1st meeting? I put in whoever like physically signed in, so if they don't sign in, that I don't know who's out there. They don't so. have a record. Yeah, we don't know who all guests are sometimes, because if they just come sit down, then you know. OK. Saying. Yeah, and there's not a there's not a policy or board requirement that we list that. Okay, either. I just I it's more of a courtesy. Okay, and if they sign in, then we'll put their names in the minutes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, we'll Director Mamie. I heard a motion, maybe from Director Coleman. Yes, sir. I have a motion from Director Coleman. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Director Granado. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, agenda item made. Uh, these are the consent items. Uh, they've been gone through the committee meetings and have been discussed before. Uh, the following items are routine or administrative in nature and have been discussed previously by the board or, or committees. The board has been furnished with support documentation on these items. Uh, as a board of director, you are allowed to pull any one of these items off the consent agenda to be considered individually. And do I have anybody that wants to pull any of these items? 8A through E. Hearing none, I'll t entertain a motion to approve the consent items. So moved. I have a motion by our vice, uh, Madam Vice Chair. Do I have a second? I have a second. I have a second by our Madam Secretary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> Okay, uh, agenda item nine, discussion and closed session, consultation with the attorney for matters concerning legislation and possible legislation subject to attorney-client privilege. We will now proceed with the safety, well, excuse me, wrong note. Under section 551.071 of the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board of directors will be going into closed session in order to discuss agenda item nine discussion and on consultation with attorney for matters concerning legislation and possible legislation subject to attorney client privilege we're now going into closed session at 8 for, or we're recessing the uh, meeting at 8:48 uh, a.m. and we'll be we'll call it back into session um, when we're done all right 8:48 a.m. <coughs>
Good morning again. I'm going to open the uh, Corpus Christi RTA Board of Directors meeting, uh, back, call it back into session at 9.34 a.m. We're on agenda item 10, discussion and possible action to authorize the chief executive officer or designee to award a contract to RXDX LLC for zones one and two and to Tizak Concrete Inc. for zone three for the ADA bus stop improvements phase seven project. Ms. Montes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good morning, Sharon Montes, Managing Director of Capital Programs and Customer Service. Um, before I begin, I would like to introduce uh, the representatives from RxDx that are in the audience today. Today, I have Mr. the owners, Mr. Ruben Pena, Mr. Uh, David Flores, and Mr. Carson Riker. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate it. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, this item uh, aligns with the board priorities, facilities, and public image. Just some background on this. To date, we've completed six phases of the ADA bus stop improvements, um, 831 stops out of 1,375, about 60% compliancy. The overall goal is to reach 100%. Now that's contingent on the right of way that's available. And we hope to accomplish this within the next eight to 10 years. <clears throat> Throughout the different ADA bus stop improvement projects, we have divided the work into smaller zones rather than one large one. And the reason is to give smaller uh, businesses an opportunity to bid on projects that um, require bonding, but are, that are less in cost than one large project. Identified need. There are 544 bus stops remaining that need to be improved. This particular uh, bus stop improvement phase will improve 57 stops. The bids were issued on October 4th. Pre-bid was held October 18th. The bid opening was held November 15th. Um, we had four bids come in, RxDx, Ties at Concrete, Brizo Construction, and Mako Contracting. RxDx was low bid for Zones 1 and 2, and Tizac was low bid for Zone 3. So overall, RxDx would be awarded $447,662.50. And Tizac would be awarded Zone 3 for $132,844.88. Grand total, $577,506.88. RxDx has been in business one year and is located in Sinton. Previously, the company operated under Gemini Services. The company has two majority owners um, and one of the owners, Ruben Benya, has managed the CCRTA shelter refurbishment contract for at least four years under Gemini Services and has done um, satisfactory work. The company is currently working on a revitalization project for the city of Beeville, estimated cost about $401,000. Tyzak <coughs> has been in business 22 years and is located in Minnesota. The company the company has previously completed construction services for the CCRTA for phase two and phase six of the ADA bus stop improvement for a total of 155 bus stops. The quality of work was completed in a superior and expeditious manner. Tizak has also worked for TxDOT on various projects. They range from 587,000 to 8 million. The DBE goal for the project was or is 12%. RxDx has committed to 20.62%. And Tizac Concrete has committed to the 12.09%. Financial impact. As I mentioned earlier, the contract total is 577506 It's budgeted in the 2023 capital projects budget. It's federally funded, 80% and 20% local match. The engineer's cost estimate was 768,297.33, so we're below the estimate. Committee review this item opened on November 15th in the afternoon. 
So we missed the committee meeting and we're bringing it straight to board. Therefore, the recommendation is uh, staff requests the board of directors authorize the CEO designee to award contracts to RXDX LLC for zones one and two for an estimated total of 444,662 and to Tyzak Concrete and Inc. for zone three for an estimated total of 132,844.88 for the ADA bus stop improvements phase seven project. And that concludes my presentation, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions for Ms. Montes? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Are all the zones gonna be performed simultaneously? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Montes? What's the timeline to complete the projects? Currently, it's 90 days. Fantastic. Any other questions for Ms. Montes? Mr. Chair, yeah, just yes. one. So the, uh, we'd be awarding two different ones? That's what I'm reading? Is there a two reason? Two different companies, sir. Is there a reason why we just didn't give it um, just, just to one, to do one zones one, two, and three? Because we bid the zones individually so zone one is a project in itself, zone two and zone uh, three. Uh, Sharon, so the, the reason why we separated it was twofold, so that they it could work simultaneously, because generally if you assign it to one company, they're going to do one at a time. And also that they kind of disperse the work and allow other people in the community to be, to be part of it. And as you saw here, you know, some zones were cheaper with some companies, some zones were cheaper with the other companies. So it ends up being a beneficial cost-wise to us as well. Marisa, or Sharon, can you go back to that slide where you had Absolutely, that? Absolutely, yeah. sir. Where you yeah, had I see it. I'm just saying, uh, you know, we have one company that did zones one and two, and then we just had this other one just do just zone three. So I was just curious why we just didn't. It's based on the low bid, uh, Director Coleman. If you look at this, RXDX was the low bidder on zone one. They were the low bidder on zone two. And Tyzak Concrete was low bidder on zone three. Yes, sir. I saw that. Thank you. But I, I guess I didn't understand your question then. It, just why the, the RXDX LLC just didn't we just didn't give them Zone Three as well? Um, I, I understand the difference in the numbers. I clearly see that. I just wanted to know. So my understanding is that we wanted to spread out the work. I just heard her say that and allow other companies or smaller companies to be able to to do the work. Yes, sir. That's why I was split in the zone. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes sir. it would also compromise the bidding process because if we don't go to the low bidder, then you know what are we doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that low, both of them are good companies. Yeah. Any other questions for Ms. Montes? Did we answer your question, Director Coleman? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have second. a motion by Director Mamie, a second by Director Salazar. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much. I think much. you're up next again, right? I am, sir. Yes, Agenda sir. Agenda item 11, discussion of possible action to authorize the CEO or designee to award a contract to Camacho Demolition LLC for the demolition of Clayburg Bank. You have the floor. Again. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, I'd like to take a moment to introduce uh, some representatives from Camacho, Mr. Joe Guajardo and Ms. Paula Breeding. Thank you all so much for being here. Welcome. Appreciate Thank it. you for being here. Uh, the board priorities are facilities and public image. So just some background. As part of the federal review process, the environmental review process, FTA required that we issue requests for proposals for two-year time frame in six-month increments. Uh, we have now entered into the last six months. Um, it is currently out for bid, the RFP for the um, purchase or, or repurpose of the building. And the bids are due January 18th at 3 o'clock. Uh, at that point, if no one bids on it, then we are eligible to demolish the building at this point. At that point, we would have met our requirement with FTA. At 301? Yes, sir. Okay. The scope of work for the demolition will include asbestos abatement of the building, <coughs> demolition, demolition of approximately 28,000 square feet of building, and the concrete slab. Identified needs. So CCRTA does have plans to construct a new park and ride lot where the Clayburg Bank is located. 
which leads to the necessity of demolishing the existing bank so we can move forward with that project. Here are the bids. Uh, the bids were issued on September 18th. The pre-bid was held October the 5th. The bid opening was November 17th. Again, it was after the committee meeting. Uh, the CCRTA received eight bids, but one was non-responsive because they did not submit the DBE participation form, form and they were not the lowest bidder. The low, lowest bidder was Camacho Demolition at 345,800. Camacho Demolition has been in business 11 years and is located in Corpus Christi, so they're a local company. Uh, Camacho has completed abatement and demolition for numerous school systems in the area. The costs for the various projects range from $300,000 to $715,000. And the work was completed in a very satisfactory manner. We did receive three reference uh, checks back and they were all glowing, so they, did, they do good work. Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, the DBE goal for this project is 5%. Um, Camacho Demolition is a DBE certified firm in the state of Texas and will self-perform the work and therefore their DBE commitment is 100%. Financial impact, the estimated cost of the uh, contract is $345,800. The funding is budgeted in the 2024 capital projects budget. The architect's estimate for the work was about $470,000. We came in under that committee review. This was not taken to committee because the bids were open uh, on the 17th after the committee meeting of the 15th. Therefore, staff requests the board of directors authorize the CEO to award a contract to Camacho Demolition LLC for the demolition of the Clayburg Bank for an estimated total of 345800 Mr. Chair, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any questions for Ms. Montes? Yes, sir. Um, I just want to congratulate the team, staff, because I've not seen that many on both projects have that many people come forward. It looks like whatever we're doing, keep doing it because we allow more competition, and guess what? We get better pricing. When you only have one or two bids, um, yeah. you start questioning whether or not we're getting the best proposal. And uh, I've heard of the company Camacho. They've done excellent work from what I've seen. So congratulations to you and, and you. to Camacho for submitting a bid. Procurement does an outstanding job. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Montes? Here none, I entertain a motion. So moved. I, a motion by Director Salazar, second by Madam Secretary. Any further discussion? Here none, all in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, Sharon, give me one second. I'm going to go to agenda item 13. We have some directors that need to Oh, okay. Boogie yes, out. I'll go back to 12 right after the committee chair reports. Admin and finance, Direct, uh, Madam Secretary. Uh, nothing new to report, but just to echo what uh, Director Salazar said, good job with um, the, these procurement and, and proposals and the quick turnaround. Thank you. Great. Uh, Director Salazar on operations and capital projects. Uh, just good job <clears throat> on the procurement side. Very impressed. Thank you. Gabby's not here today. Uh, Ms. Anna, would you like to talk about rural and small cities or anybody else on the committee? No. Continue. Okay. Thank you. Uh, legislative. Uh, we have we do not have a meeting, but we'll have one to, uh, at the next one. We will be going to D.C. Uh, today and coming back on, I think, Thursday, for, Thursday or Friday for some of us. And we'll have more of an update of what transpired in those meetings. So we'll be able to present that to that Great. committee and then to the board after that. Great. Thank, Thank you. you what is that Bernal. date? Today. Today. They're leaving today. Oh, you're leaving today? To Washington? That's why we're, I'm trying to move the meeting along so that right. you can make the plane. <laughs> don't hold the plane for me, don't worry. <laughs> Adelante. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, great. Uh, agenda item 12, update on RCAT committee. Thank you, uh, Sharon, for your patience. Absolutely, sir. My pleasure. <clears throat> just real briefly, um, the RCAT meeting of November 23rd, we basically just went over the awards recognition for CCRTA new hires, the board approval of the operating and capital budget. We, I did discuss the 2024 board calendar and committee meetings calendar. I also covered the holidays and service levels for 2024. 
I informed them about the FTA Triennial Review Report and no findings. Uh, I went over the September 2023 operations report, the CEO's report, and then we discussed topics for next year's agenda. And here I have a list of the upcoming uh, committee meetings in starting next year, January 18th, 15, uh, February 15th, and March 21st. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Ms. Montes. Any questions about RCAT for Ms. Montes? Hearing none. Thank you, Ms. Montes. Thank Merry you Christmas. This. You too, sir. All right, let's get into agenda item 14, uh, presentations. A, investment report for quarter ending September 30th, 2023. All right, good morning. Mr. Saldana, Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas. I'm not in my Santa suit, so I feel underdressed now for that, but uh, we'll, we'll do that. Here. Oh, wait, 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 Robert. <laughs> I was supposed to do the Gordon joke earlier today, but Santa threw me off my game. You guys ready? <laughs> Hang on. You guys ready? Yeah, ready. Let me make sure I get it right. No, <laughs> yeah. Who says, oh, oh, oh? Oh, says, oh, oh, oh? Santa when he walks backwards. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Gordon joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just keep that joke. Gordon can deliver it better than I can. <laughs> just keep that joke in mind because Gordon's not here today to give a joke. So when yeah. I get the operations report, uh, that joke will cover it. Yeah, there you go. All right, so um, <laughs> we have this Mr. David McWayne here. Uh, he's going to go over the third quarter financials or the investment report uh, in September 30th. Thank you very much. Well, Welcome, talk. David. Thanks hey, for thanks thank for you all very much thanks for, for waiting through, through everything. And it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. It's been a while since uh, I've been here in person. COVID kind of changed the way things were going for a while. Right but it's a relief to be back doing business as usual. Um, this third quarter report that I'm presenting um, obviously is done in compliance with the Public Funds Investment Act of Texas. I'm just going to be brief and get through all the uh, legislative requirements of your reporting and go straight to the economic update. As everybody in the room knows, uh, the Federal Reserve has been very aggressive at raising rates to fight inflation uh, post-COVID activity. Um, beginning last March, they started raising rates. And by June, uh, when CPI got up above 9%, they kind of put their foot on the gas. They raised 0.75 basis points, or 0.75% at four consecutive meetings. So all of a sudden, within a year's time period, we saw the most aggressive fate right, uh, rate hike in modern history. The previous high uh, rate hike was about four and a quarter percent, and it took roughly two and a half to three years for that to play out, because it was done in very modest increments. This one, in 14 months, we saw the Fed raise a full 5%, taking markets by surprise. Um, while the Fed has been very aggressive at raising rates, it appears, you know, now we've had three out of the last four meetings, they have not taken action. The last raise occurred in July, and the expectation in July was that they'd probably raise one more time. Um, they meet for the final time next week. It's highly unlikely that they're going to take any further action raising rates, but they have indicated to markets that they could keep rates up here for a while while they continue to watch CPI numbers trickle down. Um, during the third quarter, we focused primarily on kind of staying short. It's hard to keep up with the Fed when you're chasing the, the tail of the dog, but uh, we've done a very good job with the, your staff of laddering out a very uh, solid short-term portfolio that's given us spreads over cash. Uh, in the coming quarter, though, we, we do think that the Fed is probably in the eighth inning of what they're going to be doing this cycle. And we think it's very important to kind of identify funds that may be a little more reserve-like in nature and start pushing some of those funds out and getting some lock. We're seeing, you know, right now uh, the highest rates we've seen in 20 years. And we think it's important if you can identify operating things outside of operating funds. You were, you were thinking of locking in a zero to three years, I think I saw somewhere? One yeah, we're, uh, we, we are pretty solidly covered within one year. Um, my, right. uh, but I'm in, I'm in on this longer term, uh, doing a ladder out to three years to, to lock in the yes. lock in the higher interest rates? Yes, with, you know, it won't be a preponderance of the funds naturally. Right. It'll be a smaller percentage of the portfolio, but it will give you a little more predictability when you're you know, trying to predict what your interests are going to be for sure. each budget cycle. Sure. Um, we think it's important to try to get a little, uh, try to push a little money out there before the Fed starts to seesaw the other direction. Right. Um, again, 
most of this stuff I just touched on, just touched on, talking about labor markets have been loosening. Um, we have seen the uh, unemployment rates going up slightly. There is still job growth, especially here in Texas. But uh, the most important thing for what the Fed's been doing is the fact that the uh, inflation numbers are trending lower and should continue to do so as long as energy prices uh, keep going the way they're going. Um, again, more uh, substance to showing a slowing economy. The change in non-farm payrolls continues to trickle down post-COVID. You can see the three-month moving average is that dark blue line. Um, so there still is job growth. It's just it keeps moderating downwards. Uh, same thing with the uh, uh, personal consumption expenditures, the PCE. That's a very broad capture of what the average American spends uh, each month for the cost of living. So that, that number's coming down. Um, the, the one little thing I would point out is we're starting to see a little bit of uh, delinquency rates increasing on auto loans, uh, credit cards, and also uh, in the mortgage area. So, uh, you know, that that's, again, a sign that the probably the average person's a little tapped out uh, with rates being where they are naturally credit card debt is not a great thing and it's uh it's at the know, highest level it's ever been right, right yes now? sir yeah. yes sir it's uh solidly in the mid-20s or higher if you, your credit's not that good uh last but not least we have been in a complex uh yield curve environment um, we are in an inverted yield curve which is the opposite of what we normally see that yellow line was September a year ago, and while it, you know, on the short end, it looks normal, then it started to uh, taper back down. But you can see that while the Fed has been aggressive raising the red line and blue line, the highest rates right now are the six-month Treasury, and then they just taper down lower. So normally, you would expect to get a higher yield to go out two years than one year, and three years than two years, but it's the opposite right now. It stair steps down, and that is the broad masses that are uh, normal investors in this market, banks, um, mortgage companies, there's a lot of people that are trying to get lock on their books and they're bidding down uh, longer duration assets uh, to try to get predictable yield on their books. Specific to y'all's portfolio, um, quarter over quarter, we ended September about a million dollars higher than uh, June. Um, the market value, uh, very similar. Um, the market value declines have mit been mitigated as we've been reinvesting at higher rates, those things that, that were lower yielding that have matured. Um, the weighted average maturity is well within the policy requirements at just over three months. And the weighted average yield, you can see, increased almost 20 basis points <laughs> over the prior quarter, going from 468 to 486. The actual yield as of September 30th uh, with some of the new reinvestments is now slightly over 5%. And if you look at that pie chart there, that's just depicting, again, we've had a big focus on short-term duration. So that first column is your cash, what you have in the pools and money markets. Uh, it's about 48% of all your funds. Uh, there's 49% invested to mature within 12 months. And then there's just a little sliver right now two million uh, between one and two years. But 35% of the portfolio is in agency notes and 18% is in short-term commercial paper. And this comparison uh, on the far left column is where we just rounded out uh, the third quarter compared to the previous three quarters this year. You can see that normal trend where, you know, you kind of hit your high water mark around uh, December, January, and then you, you start to taper down. Um, the book value, again, ended at 60.8 million, as well as the market value. But what you will see is that steady increase um, on that yield right in the middle. Uh, you go back to fourth quarter last year, um, ending in November, or what was that, December? You know, the average yield on the portfolio has gone from a 345, and it's notched up to a 486. And that's primarily a function of catching up with what the Fed's done. You see the benchmark six-month and one-year Treasury yields. Right now, the six month has been higher for the past three quarters due to that inversion that I notated on the previous slide. Um, but the, you can see that the uh, total earnings continue to increase nicely for the portfolio, having gone from slightly under half a million in Q4 to uh, up just north of 733,000. This is just depicting, again, uh, breaking out the book value by uh, asset category, um, comparing the, the pool balances in commercial paper and agencies. 
to the previous quarter. I won't spend a lot of time, but we can open it up to questions for y'all after this. These are the individual positions at the end of the quarter, um, with the uh, top two lines just being some balances at uh, Frost Bank, and the others are individual positions. So as of September 30th, there were five investments in commercial paper totaling 11 million. There was 10 securities in uh, federal agency securities, uh, just under 24 million. Uh, again, this is just a depiction of the anticipated uh, interest income off the current investment portfolio. And as you can see, obviously, it's uh, been increasing as rates have increased. And this, again, just uh, comparing the uh, anticipated uh, cash flows moving forward from, uh, you know, in the next couple of quarters, um, we continue to see uh, increase off of the uh, the active securities in the portfolio. And this here is just, again, depiction of uh, what is anticipated in cash flows between the maturities and the interest payments coming off the securities. Uh, so we have some pretty big uh, maturity months, and then we'll have some that are uh, have some gaps. But we're just looking to fill the gaps with things that are maturing. I'll open it up. If you all have any questions, that pretty much encapsulates everything as of September 30th. And uh, like I said, it's a pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to be uh, working with you guys and being an extension of your team here. Thank you, David. Any questions for David? I'm sorry? Very good presentation. Yes, ma'am. Very user-friendly. Yeah. No questions? David, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Keep cranking on that crank. Will do. Will do. Right. And thanks again to partner up with you all. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, agenda item 14B, October 2023 financial report. Uh, before going to all the reports, I want to know if uh, Derek wants to do his before he leaves, or do we want to just have Sam? Uh, yeah, Derek can do can. his. Trying to get out of it, huh, Rita? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to That's all the whispering. I didn't want to say that. Yeah, I know this. <laughs> <laughs> remind no. Dan, remind Dan. Uh, go ahead. All right. Thank you for uh, for moving this up as well. I have to head off soon. So we've had a, a very busy, busy month and very proud of it. Uh, ridership for the weekday increased by up to 14 percent. We're averaging about a little over 10,000 during the weekdays compared to November of 2022. We did free rides to the poll stations for voters on the, the first last and last day of early voting and on Election Day. MV Transportation began operating extended service, uh, later evening service on the following routes. So four serves Flower Bluff, 12 does the Hillcrest and Baldwin area, the 34, 35 that are in Robstown. So essentially, they, they end now around 10 o'clock. And while we don't have it in here, we will, in Janu mid January, we will have some of our directly operated larger fixed routes, which will start begin having extended service as well. And we'll communicate that to the, the board in the following weeks. Route 27 service began service adjustment to include earlier pickup times for two trips. And that was more to uh, accommodate some individuals that needed to, to get to work and they were having some poor connection time, so we just departed a little bit earlier. The day after Thanksgiving and uh, on Cyber Monday, we offered a, a sale from on the Go Pass for buy one, get one promotion for our 31 day passes. And we will likely do something similar for the, the Christmas season as well, so we had some very good response. The Port Ayers transfer station construction, all the pier caps and columns have been poured. Shoring for the canopy is at 80%. Tie-ins to the city's stormwater is 100% completed. And uh, the facilities building sidewalk has been poured. You can really see it start to take shape out there if you drive past. The managing director of operations, assistant director of maintenance, and myself attended Riverside, California for the ENC pre-bid build meeting whenever some of the products that we had listed and some items that we saw it after that we wanted to, to change. So we'll be going over some of that with the board members after, you know, in a few weeks as well. Deputy CEO attended Houston Metro's President CEO, Tom Lambert's retirement, November 28th. I believe he had actually been with the agency for almost 35 years. And before becoming CEO, he was the chief of police for them as well. So it was a, he's been a, a uh, huge presence in the state of Texas amongst trans agencies and always very helpful to everyone. So it was a, it's a bittersweet day seeing him re retire. To the NAACP stakeholders meeting on November 2nd, the state of the port on November 15th, 
Then, of course, we had CCPD's high lock take bus wrap unveiling on November 16th. And I have to say that was probably the best weather I've uh, seen for that event and since I, I've been here. It's usually cold and rainy and windy, and it was uh, perfect and sunny. For uh, employee relations, we had our Thanksgiving luncheon. And thank you to all the directors that made it out there. It made a, a huge impact to all of our staff that was out there. It was a fantastic uh, event, lots of great food. And thank you to our HR and marketing team for helping uh, put all this on and get the communication out to our employees. We had our RTA holiday party at the Holiday Inn on December 2nd, and other than the tow trucks trying to take the chairman's <laughs> truck. <laughs> it was a, a very nice event, and it was a great first event as a CEO, and great to be part of that with all of our staff. We also, at that event, we announced our employees of the year, and for the bus operator of the year, it was Olga Gillette. Our administration employee of the year was Joanna Serna, and for our operations employee was Raul Raul Trejo, one of our dispatchers, and our CEO's Excellence Award went to Joe De La Rosa, who's a network system specialist that's, well, one of our newer employees that has, you know, fit immediately into the team and has done a lot of great work for all of our staff at Bear Lane and, and here at Staples. And it, MV announced their employees of the year. Mike Rios was our bus operator of the year, and employee of the year was Charmaine Jones. For recruitment employee appreciation, we held our in-house job fair at Bear Lane on November 13th, and I know we have another one coming up soon in, in December. Our new employee handbook was released on December 1st. We did a Veterans Day employee recognition on November 11th, and then you can see in those pictures the, the nice shirts that uh, Rita and her team had, had made up that have a, also a logo on the sleeve that you can't see that, that says that they're a CCRTA veteran. And then we recognize the one-year anniversary of Ms. Carol Flowers passing with a special special message on all of our buses in a, a moment of silence. In a, this is planning conference, so this is all the planners, municipal, public transit, everyone in the state of Texas was here. It was uh, actually very well attended, and more so than I expected. Attended the South Texas Military Task Force meeting on November 9th. We provided a shuttle service for the CCIA run the runway shuttle service, and as you can see, uh, Director Granado there but participating in, in, in that. And, the, and we had a, our Grinch was there as well, even though we don't have a, he, he stepped out. <laughs> we offered fare free rides to the NAACP's community luncheon over at the um, Senior Center. MV Transportation coordinated Thanksgiving food drive and angel tree for, for the holidays that the, the staff participates in. We assisted with the university's grocery giveaway on November 28th, and we uh, attended the Coastal Bend Contracting Summit at the American Bank Center on, on December 1st, and that, that was, a, I think, a very well attended event, so hopefully we'll continue to see an increased amount of bids and participation on our contracts. And for some of our upcoming events, on December 24th, it's Christmas Eve, we will be running a a modified service level, Sunday service level, December 25th, it, all of our facilities are closed. December 31st, again, uh, we're running a Sunday service level. January 1st, there are uh, no service and all of our facilities are closed. Wednesday, January 10th is our board of directors meeting. And a reminder, January 12th is our strategic board retreat, retreat which will be held at the Del Mar Oso Creek campus. On January 15th, it is Martin Luther King Day, and we do run full service, but we have our um, admin officer closed. January 19th, we will be hosting a staff retreat to go over the, the items that we've gained from the strategic retreat. And January 24th is our, our board committee meeting. Hear that? I thank you all for your, your support. and. While I'll be leaving some of you, I'll see you again, I'm sure. If not, I hope uh, all of our board directors have a, a great holidays with the family and you know, a safe holidays as well. And I look forward to 2024 and serving everyone. Any questions for Derek? Thank you, Derek. <coughs> Sorry. Good job. Good luck in DC. Thank you. Uh, no. Thank you. You are excused. All right. There you go. <laughs> all right. Go ahead and wrap up here, Robert. Oh, I thought that was the end of the report, so I was going to leave. Uh. <laughs> All right, so here, here's the financial report. Uh, this lines up with the board priority of public image and transparency. So our highlights for the month, our passenger services is uh, about 102% of baseline, so our passenger services are doing well. Our, our bus advertisement is 151% of our baseline, and our investment income because of the high rates is, is doing really well. 
you take a look at the second column from the left, um, typically we, when we budget, we budget for a deficit in October. It's our, one of our lower months for, for revenue, and people tend to spend a little bit more money towards the end of the year, of closing out budgets in here. So uh, we have a deficit of $226,275, and that's driven mostly by a month higher than expected um, health care rates that came out cost. Uh, last month we had 111,000. This month we had about 414,000. This is October that we're talking about. And then we spend our bond payment is uh, 225, uh, $250,000 plus our interest payment for our bonds. So between those two, we had a uh, negative for the month of revenues over expenses. I'll get into a little more detail in a bit here. Here's our revenue breakdown. Operating, total operating and non-operating revenues, $3.7 million. You can see the lion's share of it comes from our projected sales tax revenue. We'll either get that on Friday or early part of next week. Uh, the passenger fares for the month came in uh, one of the first times over our budgeted number at $94,000 on a budget of $92,000. Bus advertisement again $18,000 on a budget of $12,000. Um, investment income is higher than that. Stable Street lease is trending a little bit late, less. We have our capital grants uh, donations which are revenues that we get back from our, our projects, uh, $1.2 million or so. Uh, the $304,000 we, $304, we transfer in to balance the budget from our, our budgeted items in here. As you'll see, if year to date, we won't have to transfer that money. I want to get to the year date number there. So total revenues have $5.2 million and change. Operating expenses, um, or sorry, our revenues, our operating revenues, $112,000 and change. That's just the revenues generated by the operations itself. The rest of it is non-operating revenue. Again, the lion's share is sales tax and investment income at three and a half, almost $3.6 million. So total comes out to $3,708,871. Where's the money go? That's just the pie chart of this right here. So salaries and wages, $1.22 million, almost $1.3 million. So right about budget at 99.63. Our benefits is trending a little higher at 665000 Again, that comes from the um, higher health care cost that we had for the given month. Um, services, 412000 a budget of 474 Obviously, all the expenses, you'd like to see it under 100%. Uh, purchase transportation, a little over at 103%. And that's just the increased hours that we started on October 2nd for the B-line. And then the miscellaneous expenses um, are just some expenses that we had uh, from the APTA trips and some uh, retentions from our employee retention programs. Year to date wise, passenger services at 97%, bus advertising at 146%, investment income 472%, and then uh, federal grants as we trend down, we're getting closer to 100%. Second column year to date wise, $51.2 million in total revenues, 47.5, almost $47.6 million in expenses. We're about $3.65 million to the good. Um, that includes the $300,000 or so that we put in every month to balance the budget from right there. Ten months into it, it would be $3 million, so we obviously won't have to transfer that money in to balance the budget. So without the transfer in, we're about $654,000 to the good. Uh, this year on cash flow, positive cash flow. So that's always good. Total revenues again, 38.6 million of it here. Coming from operating, non operating um, capital grants, about nine and a half million dollars. The transfer ins, which we won't have to do that, three million dollars, total of 51.2 million dollars. And year to date, where the money goes, about 12 million dollars so far on a budget of $12.3 million for salaries and wages. Benefits 5.3 on, on 4.9. Again, those are driven by health care costs, the, the overages, as well as employee retention programs that weren't initially budgeted. Uh, services at $4 million, almost 4.1, and a budget of 4.7. Remember tools and supplies, 2.65 on a budget of 2.66. Utilities, 635000 on a budget of 669. Insurance. Now this is non-healthcare insurance, 478,000 on a budget of 540. Purchase transportation, 7.2 on a budget of 7.3. Miscellaneous, 684,000 on a budget of five, uh, 799,000.
So year to date wise, essentially we've uh, saved about 1.1-ish million dollars on expenses from what we budgeted for. Our fair recovery ratio so far year to date, we're at uh, 2.72, which is obviously slightly better than what we were last year. October sales tax, as you can see, it's usually one of the lower sales tax months. Um, the green line is what we did the prior year. So we, we uh, the blue line is what we actually came in. We actually came in about $117,000 over last year, but about $97,000 less than what we budgeted for, which is this one right here. So last year in September, we, we came in at $3,341,572. This year we're uh, projected to come in at, or we actually came in at $3.4 million, almost 3.5, so $117,025, better than last year. But again, 97, almost $98,000 less than what we budgeted for. Usually I'll put this slide in, but since we're getting to the tail end of the year, um, we added this slide into here. So sales tax, uh, last year at this time, we came out with $28,444,000. This year so far, we're at $30,295,000 or $1.8 million more sales tax wise for the first nine months at 6.51% increase. We budgeted for $30 million and coming in at 30.2, so about $252,000 more than what we budgeted for. So we're right about pace what we budgeted for in there. Questions? Can't believe you're off 0.84%. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to have to spend a little more. 41 hours a week at work instead of 40 hours, so I get that number better next time around. <laughs> you gotta fine tune it, Robert. You gotta fine tune it, dude. Just, just don't mention it to my CEO when the evaluation time comes around. <laughs> Any questions for Robert? Hearing none. Thank you, Robert, so much. Merry yes, Christmas sir. to you. Yes, sir. I have a procurement update. So we yeah. lines up with public image and transparency. The only procurement we have on the street right now is the restoration the, uh, for the repurposing of the Clayburg Bank. Again, I think Sharon covered that. That comes in at January 18th. We'll bring it back to the board if there's a proposal coming in. 3 p.m., right? Yes, sir. We'll be here ripping that paper open at 3 o'clock. For future procurements, now these are usually all over $50,000. Bus shelters, we're looking to exercise the first option year at almost $1.1 million. Um, we had healthcare consulting services, we're looking to exercise the one two year option, $120,000 for the two year um, for the services. <coughs> Financial auditing, uh, five year contract is a three year with one two year option, about $369,000 for five year period. Our CNG fueling station maintenance about uh, $1.4 million over a five-year period. General architectural and engineering services, when you take a look at the five-year period, about $750,000 or $150,000 a year. Uh, maintenance uniform rentals, about $71,000 for the one two-year option. So about, for I believe, six projects there, a total of $3,821,518. All these are under the signature authority of the CEO, who has uh, $50,000 signature authority. Our online DBE and vendor registration, about $18,000 a year. Investment advisory services, about $28,000 a year. Our AVO software, about 48, almost $49,000 a year. Our South Texas Military Task Force, about $25,000 a year. Media production, editing, and coordinating services, about $45,000 for a nine month period. Web maintenance and website hosting, about $16,000 a year. HVAC services, uh, we're looking to do the last uh, one year option, about $49,900 for that one year. Marketing and consulting services, about $48,000 for the year. These last two are people who help uh, provide services for our rural areas, Real, about $38,000 a year, and Paisano, about $18,400 a year. So a total of about $334,959 for those items. And of course we have our marina rental space, about $68.40 a year that we do. Any questions? Any questions for Robert? All right. All right, I'm gonna cover the operations report, so I'm gonna hopefully knock off a little ring rust from my days in the operations side in here, but uh, here we go. You got your joke? I think you covered that for me. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so this lines up with the board priority of public image and transparency. 
So passenger trips at 313,076, so about a 10.7% better than October 2022. Uh, revenue hours, we increased a little bit at 3.3% to 26,175 hours of service. Uh, revenue miles, we increased a little bit at 455,000 compared to 435,000. So when you take a look at the amount of hours, a 3.3% increase and the revenue miles 4.4, at least our passenger trips are tending a lot better percentage wise for that increase. The red line is passenger trips 313,076 uh, for 2023 for the month here. Uh, the black line is last year's number. So the increase we have for this time around. When you took a look at here, um, rural services, we had one less trip in 2023 from 24 to 23. Vanpool is about 11.4% down. Flex demand is up 72.8%. Our B line is up. 10.9% to 16,405 trips. Our fixed route, which is the majority of our trips in here, up 11.4% at 288,634 trips. So total for the services altogether, we're averaging about a 10.7% increase in ridership from last year. So that's obviously a good trend for us. This is by mode year to date wise here. You can see in here so far we're going over about 2,745,689, so about 17.5% better year to date wise. This is our on time performance, so no issues in here. Early departures, 0%. Um, our departure within five to, 0 to 5 minutes, 89.6%, which is doing well. Our wheelchair boardings for the month is 4,405. And then our bicycle boardings is 6,222 bicycle, uh, bicycle boardings for the month. As you can see, about 30% of our routes are being impacted by um, detours and uh, projects, bond projects, about 46 stops. Upcoming bond projects, we have about another 31 stops that potentially are going to be impacted by bond projects as well. For our B line, are we are slightly under the 2.5 passengers per hour, uh, zero with denials, miles between roll calls, almost 16,000 miles, and then uh, wheelchair boarding is at uh, 4,401. CAVs 35, uh, CAVs of the month, which includes six accommodations. So six different people called in to, to talk about the service, so that it went really well. Miles between road calls on our large bus is 8,814 miles on about a 6,500 uh, 6, mile uh, target. So we're doing well for that. Questions? Any questions for Gordon? He can phone in and answer your questions for you. <laughs> phone a friend. I just have a quick question, uh, Robert. The 10% increase from October 22 to 20, October 23 that we've seen in ridership, do we know kind of what's driving that? Is it because, for example, we've extended some routes service hours? Is it, is it just maybe the routes that are more popular, maybe construction or something? Do we know kind of what's driving? Because, uh, I mean, 10% doesn't seem like a lot, but, I mean, it's, it's a good amount of passengers. Yeah, so 10% for a fixed route is, is uh, pretty healthy year over year in there. Now, we just, uh, I pay more attention to all the finances now here, yeah, so sure, I'm going to sure. kind of dive a little bit into this question. here. So um, I would, we just recently started to increase hours in there, so it's not so much that we're increasing the hours, because more of those hours that we're increasing are later hours and morning, early morning hours. The later hours are hopefully to meet, meeting some smaller demands out there because the meat of the ridership comes, should come at peak time. So just by looking at this and not delving deep into the ridership numbers, I would assume most of that 10% is coming from our peak time air times in here. So 6 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock and 3 to 6 o'clock uh, on our, which I would think would be on our PTNs, Route 29, 19, 27, those type of routes, 23. Thank you. Don't quote me 100%, but that's be my, my educated guess. Any other questions for Robert? I have one question, but yes, I don't know if he'll be able to answer it. Um, do Paisano and Real submit reports to you guys? Yes, they do. We get, we get ridership 
numbers out. That's why we get some of these in here, but they okay. use uh, census reports as well. But they're integrated into these reports, or that, that's a separate? That, that the number, ridership numbers are integrated into this report. Okay, thank you. And we get individualized, individualized reports as well from them. Okay. In order to get reimbursed, they have to send us those reports. Right. Well. Any other questions for Robert? Or none? Again, Merry Christmas again, Robert. Yes, thank, sir. You. thank you. Thank Merry you for Christmas all your hard work this year. Yes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, CEO report. Uh, I'll do the normal, but uh, to wrap up on my side real quick, just Merry Christmas to everybody and uh, many blessings to each and every one of you and your families and uh, uh, happy holidays. With that, I'll start with uh, Aaron. Uh, yeah, same. Uh, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope that you get to enjoy some time with your families uh, over the next few weeks and, you know, get to really spend some quality time with them. Uh, you know, you know, thank you all for another great year of being a part of this organization. It's, you know, I, I love being a part of the RTA and, and we do a lot of great work. Um, the one thing I'll say, you know, we don't get a lot of people come to public comment, you know, and when we do, they're usually yelling at us for something that they think that we did terribly wrong. But uh, today, you know, it was, it was good to get some, you know, some good feedback from one of our riders. I mean, that, that, that's our customer. And I know we can't fix all of, of her concerns, like we can't regulate courtesy, for example, people getting on and off the bus at the same time. Um, but, you know, there, there are some things that, uh, you know, like with the extended hours, she was very grateful for that, you know, looking at, you know, how we can do that on other routes. Uh, and then obviously our security and things like that, we want people to be, to feel safe. The buses are safe to ride and we want them to feel as safe as possible, right? So you're only as uh, safe as you believe or feel that you are. So it's, you know, just important to kind of look at that as well. But overall, great job, everyone. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Excellent point, Aaron. Thank you for bringing that back up. Marisa, yeah, that reminded me, would you make sure those, uh, her list of items that she turned in, is Marisa back there? She said yes. Oh, okay. All right. Couldn't see. Uh, just make sure those get to the board. And Rita, if you could convey to Derek to have a, maybe a report on what we're doing for each of those items, that'd be great. Thank you, Aaron. Dr. Coleman. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, uh, Rita, and let this, the CEO know we didn't expect um, to have those free riderships to that Thanksgiving lunch, and we had a lot of individuals in need that showed up. Um, they got on the buses and went over there, and, you know, we were able to serve them some free food. And just wish I'm really m upset I missed Santa, so I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I don't even know who it was. Y'all don't even tell me who it was that came in. Okay, Santa, okay. And you're on the naughty list. <laughs> it's been a great year working with all you all and your staff. Um, Y'all know how to um, uh, really uh, <clears throat> bring excellent reports and keep us really informed. And I thank you, Marisa. She um, is in her communication to the board. Um, I really do appreciate that. And that's pretty much it. Happy Merry Christmas to all you guys. And if I don't see you all, Happy New Year as well. Thank you, Director Cullen. Merry Christmas. And Medisa is a great uh, cat herder. She can herd the cats very well. Uh, Director Salasaf. Uh, congratulations to the entire team. Um, we've done a great job this year, and there's, there's always going to be challenges no matter how well we perform. But I, I will make ditto to what Mr. Coleman said about Marisa. She is, I mean, she's on spot on everything. It doesn't matter what it is. She's going to let you know what needs to be done. And, if there's a problem, you call her, and she handles it. So thank you so much for being there and the entire team. Merry Christmas, and hope everybody has a happy holidays, and we'll see you all next year. I would like to echo what everybody else um, has said. We have an excellent team, an excellent board. It's nice working with um, productive, positive uh, team. And I'm happy to be on this board. And thank you for all of the staff. You all do an amazing job in helping provide the information that we need to be able to make um, good, educated decisions up here. Y'all make it easy for us. And thank you, Marisa, for everything you do for us. Even though she's back here, we see you. Thank you. She knows what the back of her heads look like. That's <laughs> and Merry Christmas to everybody. And Happy New Year. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you, Director Mamie, uh, Madam Secretary. I really can't add anything that hasn't already been eloquently stated to all of you and all of the hard work that you do. So thank you and Merry Christmas. And truly Merry Christmas to my fellow board members and our chairman. We've had a big year. 
and I really like the direction we're going as a board and look forward to working with everyone next year. Wonderful. Uh, Madam Vice Chair. Love seeing all the positive, wonderful things that we are doing in our community to uplift and make things easier for our community. Um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Great, I'll start with Armando. Uh, yes, first I want to make sure that Marisa counted me present. I got here a little late during the- uh, Another naughty Lester. <laughs> executive session. I was here present, I counted you. I, I want to make sure, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, of course, and uh, everything, everything everybody said is, is on point. Um, but I, I want to take this time just to thank the RTA. My father passed away November 1st, and I received a lot of support from the RTA and from the board members. Um, I really appreciate that specifically from uh, Director Munoz and Mr. Rendon and our CEO who attended the services. That really meant a lot to me and my family. And uh, I just want to thank everyone for that. Thank you, Director Gonzalez. Um, I have to echo what Director Mamie said. You guys make it easy for us to make these decisions by giving us all the information. And um, if we need more information, giving it to us pretty quickly. So this year has been a wonderful year. It's been an exciting year with the RTA. I think this has been like, I've been on the board for, for a couple years now. Two, three, going on three years now, or two and a half years. Um, and I think this is, year has been kind of the most exciting year for me, and I've gotten to know a lot of the board members and all the employees, and everybody's just so positive. It's just an awesome organization. I can't rave and rant about the RTA enough. We do wonderful, great things, and it's all because of our leadership and, um, and all the board. So um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and I hope to see you guys um, in um, January's meeting. Great. Thank you, Director Chato. Counselor, would you like to say or bring any tidings of joy? Merry Christmas to all and to all a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Rita? Uh, thank you all for being here today, and I hope you enjoyed Santa and his helpers. And there's a special little item he left for you, each of you in there, including you, Mr. Oh, <laughs> Great. I have to Thank say, that was wonderful. I just got a kick out of it when Santa and the Grinch came out. It's like, that just makes coming here so much more fun, and you just know that the environment is just like a fun environment. So that was wonderful. I loved it. Wonderful. Yeah. Work hard, play hard. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I don't think there's any more business in front of the Corpus Christi RTA. With that, I'm adjourning the meeting at 1032.